I wonder whether those, those, that couple in that raft uh, were aware that the dam was even there. New tonight at 6. See why, according to some, yesterday's Daring River rescue here didn't have to happen in the first place. Already in 2007, at least five people have died in Iowa at low head dams. Two rafters were almost added to that list yesterday here in Des Moines. The man and the woman in the raft you see here going over the Scott Street Dam. The powerful current kept them from being able to get to shore. Rescue crews managed to throw the pair some lifelines and life vests and did pull them to safety. But what exactly is a low head dam? Steve Carlin is here to explain. Steve? Well, Stacy, there are more than 150 of them here in Iowa, and what they are is a concrete wall built across a river or stream to create a pool for drinking water or recreation. And experts say most casual rafters and kayakers don't even know they're there. I, was, I just couldn't believe it. I was frightened. I was frightened for them. John Wank of the Iowa Whitewater Coalition says low head dams like the one at Scott Street downtown are the perfect drowning machine. It's almost like a washing machine effect. When the water hits the water below, it churns back up on top of itself. Trapping in that churning water whatever goes over the dam, including people. I wonder whether those, those, that couple in that raft uh, were aware that the dam was even there. Right now, there is nothing warning of the danger ahead. Your basic dam warning signs that need to be about 300 foot upstream of where the dam is. The coalition says the city promised to post the signs in June. Wank says the Iowa Whitewater Coalition received $28,000 in grant money to reduce the dangers on the river down here more than two years ago. $14,000 alone for the signs he's talking about. He says the city has known about it all along and has done absolutely nothing. There has been a grant awarded, but that grant is not large enough to take care of all these issues. City Park and Recreation Director Don Tripp says a $90,000 system, including signs, cables to hold them, and chains for rafters and kayakers to grab onto, is designed, goes out for bid next month, and will be installed by the end of the year. That's what this cabling project is about, is to give somebody a chance, but our message would be to stay out of these areas. John Wink says it's too bad it took a nearly impossible near miss to get the city's attention. Well, this should be a hot topic of discussion at tonight's Trailways and Greenway Advisory Meeting at 6 o'clock. That's at the Community Center at 5110 Franklin Avenue in Des Moines. And Steve, as far as the two people who were in that raft identified, I believe is 20-year-old Joseph Wanick and 21-year-old Rachel Treptow. Uh, did you have a chance to speak with those two? Well, we certainly tried, but we never made contact today. They did escape scared, but uninjured. Indeed. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. And we now know the name of a man who drowned after jumping from the Scott Street Bridge. Police say 21-year-old Franco Ventura of Mexico was one of two men who jumped into the Des Moines River July 4th. His body was pulled from the water Friday. Witnesses say Ventura jumped into the river with another man, and that other man managed to get to shore safely. One day after his raft went over a dam on the Des Moines River, an Iowa teen talks about the dramatic rescue. It was a scary afternoon and a dramatic rescue on the Des Moines River for two rafters yesterday. The two got stuck in a pocket of swirling water after their raft went over the Scott Street Dam. The city's water emergency team lowered life jackets and rescue lines to the rafters before they were finally pulled to safety. Tonight, one of those rafters says he's lucky to be alive. Janae Town has his story tonight at 10. As we were kind of coming up on the dam, but the noise got louder and louder. That noise first alerted Joseph Wanick of the danger up ahead. One second we were floating down the river, slowly, very kind of bored actually, and then the next we're like paddling for our lives. But as he and his friends soon realized there was no way out, the two spent a frightening 30 minutes trapped in the swirling current of the Scott Street Dam. There was nothing that we could do and we just got, we went over, got stuck, and the whole time we were just I don't know, I was panicking the whole time. It just, just made my heart sink because I realized how dangerous. They were extremely lucky to have survived. John Wink is vice president of the Iowa Whitewater Coalition. For two years, his group has asked the city to post danger signs and install a safety cable at the Scott Street Dam, much like the ones you see leading up to the Center Street Dam. Wink says he doesn't know what's taking so long. Last I had heard, they were going to have it done by July. Well. Here we are, and we still have inadequate signage. While the Iowa Whitewater Coalition pushes for new warning signs for river users, tonight on dry land, Joseph hopes others learn from his near-death experience. I'm so glad that we weren't harmed at all. 
So just lucky to get out alive, I guess. Janae Town, Channel 13 News. Last year, the Iowa Whitewater Coalition donated warning signs following a drowning on the Des Moines River near Boone. This spring, the legislature approved funding for more signage and the creation of portage trails around dams. Today, Des Moines police identified the body of a man witnesses say jumped from the Scott Street Bridge on July 4th. Police pulled the body of 21-year-old Franco Ventura of Veracruz, Mexico, from the river on Friday. Police say Ventura was an undocumented worker and they are trying to contact his family in Mexico.